the morning spirit of God fellowship.
You may be seated for the time being. Good luck. Good luck with that. We got a lot of firepower up here this morning, don't we? Oh, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Spirit of God Fellowship. Happy Thanksgiving week. And uh, we're so glad that you are here this morning. I, uh, I'm here to just do some housekeeping, and then I got to get out of the way. I want to give it back to this incredible uh, worship team. So um, here we go. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we are obviously in a, a, a surge in the coronavirus, and uh, it is real. Um, you know, everybody has different opinions, different states are thinking different ways and everything else, but it doesn't matter. I mean, there is a surge. We, as a, as a leadership, uh, feel very strongly and are very comfortable continuing to meet. And uh, yet, uh, I, and, and by the way, praise God, I mean, we, we've had no issues, and I say that with, you know, so bless the Lord. I say that with all humility, I say that, uh, I, I, I profess that, thank God, we can thank God, but we have to continue to pray, we have people, uh, we have a, a, an intercessory team that prays for every seat in this building, we, so believe me, we're praying, but we also have to be responsible, we want to keep meeting, don't we? So um, we strongly, again, I, I just want to say this again, I, we strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you <clears throat> to wear your masks. You have to wear them coming in. That's, that's mandated. We, we really, as, as we're in this season, we, we strongly encourage you to wear your masks even as you're, as you're sitting. Um, and Jeff reminded me, uh, please maintain social distance. I'm just taking a really good look. The good news about this building is, uh, you know, we can seat 800 people. I believe there's some regulation out there that you can be 25% of, of the, of the uh, attendance in a building or something. So we're very safe here, but so we've set these chairs up, but, but continue to socially distance. Let's be responsible Christians, right? Okay. So we strongly encourage that. And here's another little change that we've made that I think is a good one. Uh, we'll be getting this out so uh, everybody will know. Due to the fact that we will be having Thanksgiving gatherings, I'm sure some will be uh, online, some will be uh, uh, virtual Thanksgiving, some will be meeting with your families. But because of that, we just don't want to take a chance. You have a lot of gatherings, a lot of people that you're seeing. So on the 29th of November, here's an adjustment, we are going to do an online service on the 29th. It's smart bunny. It's smart. We just, we just want to feel, we'll flush the place out. Just, you know what, you're, you're with your families. We're going to take a little time there. And, and uh, Matthew James is speaking. We're going to do our normal online where you can, you can click whenever you want to. You can fast forward if you don't want to see this or that. You can be in your pajamas or whatever as you watch your, <laughs> your service on the 29th. Uh, people have gotten in trouble doing some of that stuff <laughs> when it's live. But it's not live. So, so you watch in whatever way you are comfortable. So the 29th is online, the old-fashioned way. Remember, you can watch them Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. Just, uh, and, then, just, and then December 6th, we're coming back here. The Great Awakening uh, Coffee House is open, right, Paul? And it is our Sunday live service. It is going to be phenomenal because the Honorable Mayor DeGraff, Mayor of South Holland, will be our special guest for that service. You do not want to miss that. The building will have had a week's break. You will have had a week's break. Uh, so that's Sunday live. Then the services after Christmas. We're going to do some very special Christmas services in person. But December 27 is the Sunday right after Christmas. January 3 is the Sunday right after New Year's. Let's be smart. We're going to be online again for those services. Just, just smart business. And then we will resume in January, January 10, uh, with, with Sunday Live, and it will be fantastic. We, you know, I hope you're good with that. I think, I think it's the right thing to do, uh, considering the circumstances. Sunday School will be reopening January 17. Uh, Arelli has put together, we have a, a video service that we're, a, a video uh, series that we've ordered and I think it's going to be great. 
So we'll be getting it out to you. Tell your friends, next week is online. I'm out of here. I want to turn this over to our incredible worship team. Stay seated as long as you can, but let's just worship the Lord with them. Well, okay, can you get up on your feet now? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hallelujah. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten.
still wouldn't be enough to give you glory, God. So I owe you praise, God. I owe you praise. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord.
Can you praise the Lord this morning? Let's give him praise this morning. Give him praise. You may be seated. Could we just say thank you to this incredible team up here? <clears throat> man, oh man, oh man. Unbelievable. Whew. Couple uh, guests up here. Um, that incredible singer, he's walking over there. That, that's Craig Jackson, that's CJ over there. <laughs> CJ and his wife are in the back there. Dan Cantone on the guitar, another guest. You see this incredible, this incredible girl up here, Ari. She's uh, made a decision to be a part of our church, so she'll be seeing a lot of her. <clears throat> I understand that CJ and his dear wife don't have a church yet. I'm just saying, CJ. Come on now. God, I asked for the order. That's what a good salesman does, right? <laughs> Cindy? Cindy? This is Thanksgiving week. And um, so many traditions. I got to catch my breath here. I got to get my head into this. So many traditions, so many memories, right? I, I'll be very brief this morning, and, but I had a few thoughts I wanted to share with you about, about Thanksgiving. Man, we need Thanksgiving this year probably more than any year, don't we? We need, uh, we need a day that says, okay, set it all aside and, and be thankful, be grateful. But, but so many traditions, so many memories on, on Thanksgiving. I, I have memories like as a kid growing up, uh, my aunts and my uncles my cousins, all at our house for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was always at our house growing up. We had a big basement. My dad would always set up big tables in the basement, and everybody would, would come by and eat Thanksgiving at our house. I'm sure you have memories like that. And man, my mom, <clears throat> she made the best turkey, the best turkey. Now, Patrice is a great cook. <clears throat> Boy, we have, a, <clears throat> we have a turkey story, but I won't tell it, Patrice, don't worry. I get a few points for not telling it, right? Oh, maybe I should. No, I won't. <clears throat> my mom made the best dressing. I mean, just amazing. And my, my aunts, they made the best homemade pumpkin pie, not store-bought, homemade Homemade apple pie. By the way, hint, hint, that's my favorite pie is apple pie, just letting you know. Oh, Pastor Appreciation Month is over, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's coming again. And back then, of course, I could have one of everything. Not now anymore. Football games, right? Memories. Spirit of God Fellowship. The guys in Spirit of God Fellowship, every Thanksgiving morning at 8 o'clock, rain, sun, Snow, it didn't matter. We did what thousands and hundreds of thousands of other individuals did on Thanksgiving morning, right? We played tur turkey bowl on Thanksgiving morning, right? Well, I love football, but can't, I could probably not run five yards anymore, but I could watch football. So we watch football on Thanksgiving. It's tradition, isn't it, for so many? It's, it's a memory. What about bowling? I don't know what it is about Thanksgiving and, and bowling. Again, growing up, you know, we'd have our meal, and we'd take a nap, and then we'd clean up, and then early in the evening, my, the uncles would take all of us kids out to Lan Oak Lanes in Lansing, Illinois, and, <clears throat> and we'd go bowling, and we weren't the only ones because the place was packed. Memories. Spirit of God Fellowship. Big memories for Thanksgiving, right, Mary? There you are. You know, we used to meet on Wednesday nights, of course, and 
over 30 years, I, I lost count, I was trying to figure them out, but over 30 years we had a program, a service on the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. I think Mary and myself are the only two people left that has, have been at, at, at virtually every one, right Mary? And, and, and man, they, they, they were famous. I'm telling you, they were famous. We would do, we would join with another church. We joined with Faith Church many times. We joined with uh, uh, Phil Tarver's church uh, several times. And, and, and we had special guests. I think we had Ron Canoli in twice, right, Ray? Ron Canoli, the famous worship leader, uh, he was in here on a Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And this place was packed. Memories, memories. I've always loved Thanksgiving. But see, as I said last week, for some, the holidays don't have good memories. For some, the holidays are tough. But see, whether you have good memories on Thanksgiving, because we're talking about that holiday today, when you have, whether you have good memories or bad memories, I wrote this down, I don't want to get it wrong, Thanksgiving gives us all the opportunity to change from being a person that is always complaining and not thankful to a person who is grateful in all things. Thanksgiving is kind of that circuit breaker. It's that day that we can say, okay, wait, wait, press, refresh, reset. I need to be thankful. We need an attitude of gratitude. Can I get an amen to that? See, because a grateful and a thankful heart is the mark of a believer, or it should be. It, 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 it's what separates us. We have Jesus. It's the mark of of a believer, a grateful heart, a thankful heart. I don't know, I gotta, I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful this morning, but have you been around Christians that are always complaining? I wish I could use the, the B word, but we won't use that in church. You know the word. Better word, but I won't use that. <laughs> but, but you've been around people that are always complaining, right? Christians. Oh, woe is me. Life sucks. Um, oh, it's bad out there. We're not going to get through this. You know, the country's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, we, we hear all this stuff from complaining Christians. I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I, I want to say to them, were you, were you baptized in water or were you baptized in prune juice? I mean... Give me a break. I, I, that's not what God wants. How can we complain? If you own a Bible today, and, and probably 100% of the people here this morning have a Bible or own a Bible, how, how can we complain? Because if you, if you own a Bible, be grateful. A third of the world does not have access to the Word of God, to a Bible. How can we complain? If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, and I say more health because I get it. There are some people here that are, that are ill, that have illness. But if you've woke up with more health than illness, be grateful because a million people will not survive this week. They will die of an illness. I think it was my wife that said, be thankful for the parts that still work. <coughs> that, that was you, right? <laughs> I love it. That's practical. Thank God for diseases that you don't have. Be grateful. As we sit here hopping around and enjoying this incredible service, there are 500 million people worldwide right now, right now, it's hard to imagine, but we're talking about a big world that are involved in wars, that are starving, that are tortured. Yes, tortured right now, today. prison. We need to be grateful. Listen, friends, if you have food on your table, if you have clothes on your back, if you have a place to sleep, if you have at least $20 to your name, guess what? You're richer than 75% of the world. Oh, man. God, forgive us. Forgive us when we complain. Forgive us. And so, briefly, I, I, I want to, oh, there's one verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Here's our verse. Here's our verse for today. In everything, give thanks, 
for this is the will of God. In everything, give thanks. I, I love this verse, and I love the way, this is the King James Version, and I love the way it's put. There, 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 we're just going to look at that, that, that phrase, in everything, give thanks. And that first part says, in everything. Notice, and I'm glad, it doesn't say for everything. That lets us off the hook in a little bit. Now, I, I, it says in everything. Because see, let's face it, in this world, in our lives, there are things that are hurtful going on. There are things that are evil going on. There are things that are harmful. There are things that are tragic. Many of us know what I'm talking about this morning. But listen, hear me. We aren't required to thank God for everything, but we are required to thank God in everything. Are you hearing me? You see, we have a God that rescues us in the stuff that we're in. He takes us out of the fire. He takes us out of the furnace. We have a God that takes Jeremy Felton on the verge of death on a respirator and he's out of intensive care breathing on his own. We have a God that does that. We have a God that rescues us. So we don't have to thank him for everything. We have to thank him in everything in the blessings that we have while we're in the stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Christian writer Nancy DeMoss, she wrote a, a Bible study, and she studied uh, three words. She studied grace. I'm sorry, two words. She, started, she studied grace, and she studied thankfulness. And, and, and she studied this for two months. Two months. She did every reference there was on, on the words gratitude and thankfulness or thanksgiving. And here's her conclusion. I've seen that if I am not ceaselessly vigilant about rejecting ingratitude and choosing gratitude, in other words, what she's saying, I got to be really, really on it, I all too easily get sucked into the undertow of life in a fallen world. I start focusing on what I don't have that I want or what I want that I don't have, and my life starts to feel hard, wearisome, and overwhelming. That's after two months of studying those two words. Well, guess what? We don't have to do what Nancy DeMoss did. Let's start with 1 Thessalonians 5.18. We don't need a two-month study. Let's start practicing that verse today. Second part of that phrase, in everything, give thanks. Give thanks. Carol Lewis is a writer. She wrote a book called A Thankful Heart. She wrote it about a Thanksgiving day in 2001 where her daughter was tragically killed in a car accident. But she used 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18 as her secret weapon to get through that almost unthinkable tragedy. And, and here's what she says. Developing a thankful heart for all the moments of our lives, <clears throat> both good and bad, mean that instead of ranting against the things we can't change, we choose to thank God. I believe that being thankful to God has the potential not only to alter our percep perceptions of our circumstances, listen, but also to heal our hearts during the most painful experiences of our life. Boy, that is a mouthful. Vic Davis did our retreat in January. He's going to do our retreat this coming January, God willing. Vic Davis was the associate pastor, the assistant pastor of our church in the late 70s. He went where him and Faith lived in, in Gary, Indiana, and we started a church out there with them. It's still going. Spirit of God, East Fellowship. But in February of 1994, Vic and Faith Davis lost two of their sons. <clears throat> two of their three sons, to a tragic car accident. Can you imagine that? Two boys, gone. Patrice and I were obviously talking to Vic and Faith. Uh, they came out before the retreat. We met about our own situation. But, but Vic took me aside and he said, you know what? 
in the depth of, of, a, of a sorrowful night, in the, in, the, in the middle of a long night, God spoke to me. This is what Vic told me about the tragedy of losing two boys. God spoke to me and said, I trusted you, Vic, with my two precious lambs, Michael and Scott. I trusted you to nurture them. I trusted you to parent them. I trusted you to raise them. I gave them to you. I lent them to you for the days that they were on this earth, but I've called my sons back home. Wow. And Vic said he held on to that word, and him in faith, it brought them through those difficult days, those difficult months, and it brought Vic to a place. This is Vic telling me to a place where they could eventually thank God in everything. Are you with me this morning? I mean, that puts into perspective what some of us have gone through as we have suffered great loss. See, we get it mixed up sometimes. We get it mixed up. So often we think, I will be thankful when everything is going well. I will praise him when, when life is good. But I, I don't think this theology is correct. I think we've got it wrong. And I'm guilty of it too, by the way. See, according to the Bible, a thankful heart is determined by your attitude surrounding the circumstances that you are in. The Bible says that, that a thankful heart is, is determined by your perspective in life when you're going through difficult times, not the circumstances. That's the tough part. That's the in everything. Give thanks. And so, so, so let, me just, let, me just, let me just bring it down to this, and, and our wonderful team is going to uh, uh, share one more song with us. But, but let me just say, I know that in this room, there are good, godly people. Let me say that again. Good, godly people are here this morning, and you've got many good reasons to not be jumping up and down this morning. I'm saying in everything, in everything, give thanks. And you're saying, are you kidding me? Good godly people. There are good godly people here this morning that, that have good reasons to be sad and not thankful. Good reasons maybe even to complain about the circumstances. Good godly Christian people. But you know what? Let's make a change. How about it? Let, let, let's, let's make a change. Let, let's turn it around. Let's try something. I want to encourage you to take that verse today. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. In everything give, give thanks for this is the will of Christ Jesus. It's easy. Memorize it. Memorize it. I just did it right now. In everything give thanks for this is the will. Let's memorize that verse and let's say it every day, every hour if we need to, and I'll be right there with you because there are some of us that need to say that verse every single day. I promise you, if you do that, it'll change your life. Let's start with that verse. Let's do something else this week. How about we make an agreement that we, for one week, we fast from complaining. <laughs> one week. One week, we can do this. One week. I said, I said last week, this is my house, I make the rules, no talking about politics, remember? How about we just leave politics alone for a week? Then maybe we'll be able to stop complaining. Both sides. One week, let's memorize this verse, let's stop complaining, for one week, and let's trust God no matter what. How about it? It's worth a try. It's been almost, almost three years, almost four, that John asked me to pastor this church. And when he asked me to pastor this church, I have to be honest, it was the last thing that I ever expected. It was the last thing on my mind. But I accepted the call because I knew it was God, and I knew God was speaking through John. And I, I, I want to tell you this morning, this, I, I want to tell you this morning that here we are, 
almost four years later, I love this church. And I also got to tell you, yes, amen. And I got to tell you this, I love pastoring this phenomenal church. Really, I do. Now, I, I, I love it so much, I, I, I'd like to hang around as long as God will allow me to do it and as long as the, you guys will allow me to be up here. I love this church. And I want to say to you this morning, good, godly, committed brothers and sisters, I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for standing with Patrice and I and Kara and Chris and Jaden in the depths of our situation this past year. Thank you to this church for stepping up because together, look around you. This is Thanksgiving service. There's some churches that aren't meeting. We're meeting safely. Look around. Look what God's doing. He's doing something new. I want to say thank you for stepping up. And I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. It is. It really is. And so here we are in this season where we can't hug. Well, I see some of you breaking the rules every now and then. Or should I say some of us breaking the rules every now? True confession, I'm sorry. Some of us break the rules with hugging, but we can't hug, let's face it, it's something we shouldn't be doing. Fist bumps, socially distanced, we gotta stay six feet away. Okay, that's the season that we're in, we, we accept that. But you know what we can do? We can look each other in the eye and we can say, I wanna thank you for all that you've done in my life. I want to thank you for being a good brother. I want to thank you for being a good sister. We can stand six feet away and say, I want to thank you. How about this? I appreciate you. I, I encourage you. As you walk out of here this morning, stand six feet away from somebody and look them in the eye and say, thank you. That's what we need to do. Thanksgiving isn't a holiday, it's a lifestyle. Let's establish a new habit this Thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks. Let's have an attitude of gratitude and let your attitude of gratitude be evidence of your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to just ask the team to come on up. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this church. I love this church, Lord, and you love this church. You love your church. You love the church worldwide. But, oh, you love this church. So much healing has gone on in this church. This is a church that restores. This is a church that, 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 that reaches out. This is a church that is multicultural. This is a church that, that is grace-filled. Lord, we, you love this church, Lord, but help us. Help us to continue to hear your voice. Help us to continue to heal racism. Work together. Work hard to make sure we're united, black, white, and red, and yellow, and all the other colors of the rainbow. Lord, I pray for this church. I thank you for it. I thank you for every individual. I ask for safety as some meet with families. I ask for a blessed day if some choose to to just be alone with their immediate family. But God, continue to bless this church, continue to protect this church, continue to let your grace be evident to anybody that steps foot in this church. I thank you, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Can I get some thankful people in the building to stand on their feet? And we're going to lift Jesus' name up before we leave this place today. Hallelujah.
say From eight to eight There is a name A name above a name Jesus There is a name above a name Whereby we must be saved From eight to eight There is a name above a name There is no other name but Jesus No other name but Jesus Above all name, a name you have to say. For eight to eight, there is a name above all other names. Know the name, but know the name, but know the name, but a name under heaven whereby we must be saved. From eight to eight, there is a name above all other names. Know the name of Jesus. Know the name of Jesus. Know the name of Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords, King of glory, strong and mighty, mighty in battle, lily of the valley, El Shaddai, Adonai. He is my King. He is my
You can have a seat. Uh, I just about left the building. <laughs> wow. Whoo. Oh, my goodness sake. So, uh, Dan, we got a Christmas uh, service coming up. You and I have to plan it. Is it the 20th or whatever? Yeah, 20th. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to get a commitment from this group to be here for that one, right? Again, a good salesman has to ask for the order. Ask for the order. <laughs> I'm unashamed. <laughs> Come on up, Johnny. It's my son, John. John Harrington. He's going to close us. Testing, testing. I'm out of breath. <clears throat> All right. A uh, little Thanksgiving piece for y'all. I actually wrote this last year, and uh, this message was perfect because I actually went through some grief. Me and my family went through some grief, losing my dad suddenly. So now I got to stand on what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> I'm talking about y'all. Y'all just had me turned up. I'm cool. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Glass half empty or half full. The haves, the half sums, and the half nots. The good lucks, the sad lots. We cast lots because life's a gamble. A loose grip on the handle and the door closes. Lord knows this is not what you wanted or predicted. It didn't come automatic like a stick shift. And now the gear shifted, but the catch is you were never in control. Steering down the wrong way of a one-way called Thanksgiving, a recipe for disaster that will leave you crashed and burning in bitterness, self-employed suffocation due to the air baggage of discontentment, locked into a vicious cycle of ungratefulness. This sucks, can't breathe, it's like you're choking. Don't move him too fast, his spirit might be broken. This is a different type of pain, where the mind plays tricks on you and the enemy does too. Give me your outlook and your joy, and matter of fact, your love too. Forget everything he's done for you and everything he is. Compare yourself to others and focus on your fears. Your shortcomings are too tall, your circumstances too great, and the bad people doing good, man, how could you give thanks? It's all lies and deceit, a poisonous cancer that's often misdiagnosed, but praise be to God, the antidote is free. An attitude of gratitude adjustment. And here it is. God's love is enough if he never did anything else. A truth so simple, you can literally thank your way out of a situation, even if it never changes. Now turn that car around before you get a ticket. So, this on? Test? Hello? Hello. Here we are. Thank you, Joanne. So before we go, we want to uh, thank God for what's happened here today. We want to thank God for what's happened here today. So with our lips and with our hands, we say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again, Lord. Thank you again. We're thankful for everyone who uh, really spent all this time doing this for us so that we could worship Jesus Christ. This whole worship team, we just, we're thankful for you guys. We're thankful for the crew that's in the back. We're thankful for the entire crew that's in the back. Joanne, Paul, all of you guys, all of you, we're thankful. We're just thankful for uh, the fellowship that we have. So I just want to leave you with a blessing. So reach out your hands. This is a blessing that you can receive. Be blessed by the love of the Father of life. Be blessed by the grace of Jesus Christ that 
pours into your life. Be blessed by the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. So just be blessed. Let your entire being be flooded by God himself so that you grow in thanksgiving for all that God has done. And so go. Go in the blessings of God. Go in the mercies of Jesus Christ. Go in the love of the Holy Spirit. Take what you've been given today and give it away to someone else. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes. Here's a, here's a sign. Here's a sign from heaven. We are going to be released wedding style. We're going to be released wedding style. So we're going to have some people who will come to your row and release you. We're going to be starting in the back. And if you are a first-time guest here today we have a place that you should go to. It's our guest booth in the back, our visitor's booth. We want to just give you something to remember us by. Okay, so make sure you stop there.